last video I showed you uh, how to put these finishes into a perspective, how to make it look like they are in perspective, and then also how to add color patterns and textures to various furnitures if you need to. Now it's my opinion that this was just a coloring job. If you truly want to render a picture, you're going to add light and shadows to the picture. That's what makes it really come alive for a client. So over here, this is kind of something that I played with a little bit, just to show you how uh, different that the room feels once you get some light and shadows into it. This is our end goal. So we're going to start back here. And we're going to add some shadows and I'm really just going to concentrate for the purposes of demonstration around this couch and how to work with layers and how to work with shadows and to get uh, exactly what it is that you're looking for. So I'm going to start by going over to my layers panel and right now my wood floor and my wallpaper at the very top. I'm actually going to move those all the way down towards the bottom and we're going to go right above where the line work is for this picture right above background copy. I'm doing this because I want the shadows to show on top of the wood floor and the wallpaper and because this is layers, whatever's on the bottom is going to be on the bottom. Whatever's on top is going to be on top of the other layers. So we're working with the hierarchy that Photoshop already provides. I'm going to go all the way back up to the top again. Now this pattern fill one, that is my couch. That is the pattern that I put in here and what I want the shadows to do is to go on top of it. So I'm going to click on pattern fill but then I'm going to click on new layer and you'll see that a new layer popped up in Photoshop. This is where all the shadows are going to go for the couch so I'm actually going to name that couch shadows. Beautiful. Now I need the um, shadow on the floor to kind of come out into the space a little bit. And remember that shadows are always darkest when they are closest to the object and then they sort of fade out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool over here in the tools panel. And I'm going to trace along the floor line and I'm really going to exaggerate this. I know that the shadow is not coming out quite this far um, but this is just kind of how I'm going to work with it a little bit. And I would imagine that the shadow would probably kind of come back here a little bit. And again, I'm working around the floor line a little. And something similar to this. Enter. And you'll see the marching ants. That's what we're going for. Our shadow is going to only fall within this area for this particular couch. Now to put shadows in, I'm going to use the gradient tool, which is over here in the uh, tool panel as well. And I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to show you there's all kinds of gradients that you can use. Obviously some are better than others in terms of what they're showing. Um, obviously that's not the greatest shadow but this is the one that I'm really most interested in. It's going from a solid color and it fades out into transparency. So I'm going to select that one and I'm going to click and what I can do instead of it being black I'm going to come over here to the foreground color and I'm actually going to use the eyedropper. All I do is just drop my cursor down from this panel and into here and I'm going to try and find a dark part of the wood floor. Something like that. Now my shadow probably wouldn't look so great that way but I'm going to just bring it down and do a shade of that color. If I just go straight down and then I'm going to click OK. Now before we work with shadow, there are two types of uh, gradients that we can work with. There is the linear gradient and there's the radial gradient. Now in this instance, I kind of feel like the light is behind and so it's going to be pretty even coming straight out from the couch. So I'm going to use the linear gradient. Now how to work the gradient tool. Think of the darker, more solid color is going to be attached to the cursor when you first click and then the second click will determine where the transition of transparency happens. So I'm going from dark to light and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go straight down this time um, and I'm not going to quite hit this. I'm just going to come shy of hitting the marching ants at the bottom and you'll see that it what it does is it's darker here and it gets lighter as it goes. Now I can build on this if I want to and I'm going to actually kind of keep going uh, further and further away 
from there because I'm building the shadow. Remember, it's always darkest. See how dark it gets right there? It's always darkest closer to the object. So I'm going to do maybe just one more overall. That should just about do it. I'm going to click Control D to get rid of the marching ants and you'll see that we have a really good looking shadow. And it probably is a little bit sharp here if there's a uh, light coming down into the space. Now the shadow is on top of the couch and so the easiest way to um, maneuver this is to take this pattern fill and put it above in the layers panel and all of a sudden you'll see that that shadow goes right underneath the couch. Uh, we did get the cat tail so we do need to find um, the cat layer which I believe is this very last one that I did and I'm going to bring that all the way up. And I'm also going to put that underneath the couch fill as well. So now the shadow is not going through the cat's tail. Um, we have a pretty good looking shadow. It fades out like it's supposed to. Now something interesting that you can do to the shadows is as long as that layer is highlighted, I can come up here and I can kind of play with some features that uh, Photoshop has. So for instance, overlay is a popular one. Um, for this particular thing, it's not really uh, giving me a shadow look, so I might not necessarily want that one. I could try multiply, and you know, that doesn't do too bad. Uh, I actually kind of like that. It's not quite gray and dark and black. It kind of gives a good tone to that, so I'm going to keep it on multiply. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add shadows to the couch so that it kind of feels like, you know, there's indents where people have been sitting in the couch, maybe some around this pillow. There's also going to be shadow on the front side of the couch because the light is really coming in from the window behind it. So I'm going to use, instead of the polygonal, I'm just going to use the lasso tool. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I think it's important to kind of see what you're doing when you're working with this particular tool. With the lasso tool, um, you click and drag it into the shape that you want it to be. So you have to be a little bit careful as to what you're doing. So I'm going to kind of contour here and maybe light's kind of hitting it up on the top a little bit. Kind of come down. I'm going to come back around this pillow right here. Um, right like that around the kitty. Sorry kitty, you're not getting shaded yet. and back to where I started and then that's kind of the pattern that you get. This time I'm not going to use the uh, linear shadow, I'm going to use the radial. So I'm going to click on the gradient and I'm going to click on the radial. Again what I can do is uh, if I want a shadow a little bit closer to what I'm working with I'll pick the green and then I'll come down just a little bit. Um, not quite into pure black but maybe just a little bit of a transition there. And then click OK. Now shadows are going to be coming from up this time because light's coming down. We want the transparent part of that to be towards the top. So I'm going to go from the bottom and I'm going to go straight up, not quite hitting uh, my border. And I don't really see much happening and the reason why is because my couch shadows um, are actually underneath the um, fill pattern. So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually click on the pattern fill and then I'm going to create a new layer. And this one is going to be um, couch shadows as well. But I'm going to put top as part of me knowing that this is going to be on top of the couch. And so because it's on top of the layer here in the panel, uh, we're good to go. So let's try this again. Radials selected. I'm going to kind of come in from here and I'm not going to quite hit the border. And you'll see that that couch starts darkening a little bit. And if I feel like I need to do more, I can get closer and you can start seeing that radial coming in and maybe there's some shadows coming in this direction, maybe some coming in from here. If I do go over a little bit, you'll see how it kind of does catch things a little bit more. That's looking pretty good. And in fact, I could even go backwards a little bit. So I'm going to control alt Z and I'm going to go back a couple. That's about right where I want it. And actually maybe I might do just a little bit more shadow right there. Perfect. 
I'm going to control D to deselect the marching ants and you'll see that I've got some pretty nifty looking shadows. It looks very natural. Um, you know, that's basically how I think that the light is hitting the couch uh, coming from up above. And now it's time to do the front of the couch. So again, I'm going to use the lasso tool. I feel like that's the best tool for me. And I just kind of follow the contour. Maybe there's some light starting to happen like right in there so I don't follow it completely. There's probably some light hitting that cushion, but where the cat is, there's going to be shadow for sure. I'm going to go around the cat for right now. I don't need him to have a green shadow necessarily. And then maybe where the pillow is, it's definitely darker. But here, there's going to be light hitting right there. So then I come back around here. Um, it's really kind of getting to know objects and how light's going to hit them, which will determine how you complete this. And then there's the marching ants, and that's where the shadows are going to be. So again, I'm using the radial tool. I'm going to click on the gradient, and the shadow again is going to come from the bottom up. This time I went over it a little bit. Now you could use the linear tool here. I don't see where there'd be anything wrong with that. Sometimes I like the radial, it gives me a little bit more control. I can decide where things are going to be a little bit better. You know, right where this cat is, it's going to be a little bit darker, I think, and same here. Now if I go right in the middle, you can see that it gave me a really big blob, and I don't necessarily want that. I'm going to go from the inside out and continue to build on it until I get it to do what I feel like it needs to do. Now that's pretty dark. Um, and I might not want it to be quite that dark, so I control Alt Z to go backwards. Um, that looks about okay. Control D to deselect, and there is the couch. And you can see it already kind of comes with some natural highlights. Um, I don't really have to do a whole lot to this um, in order to get it to work. Now when you're working with light and shadows, you've really got to think about where um, shadows are going to be. Normally in every room there are shadows up on the corner, so I'm going to click and do a new layer. And I'm going to name this uh, Wall Shadows. And let me just show you how I do the wall shadows, especially up on the ceiling and such. Um, let's use the polygonal lasso tool. And again, I'm over exaggerating I, because I want something that I can work with. Uh, I want an edge that I know that I have to kind of go to. So I'm going to do something really over exaggerated just like that. Now usually there's always shadows in the corners of rooms, so I'm going to take the gradient tool. I'm going to make sure that the radial is turned on. Um, this time I don't want a green <laughs> shadow necessarily. Um, this is about the color of that room, so I'm going to kind of come down um, somewhere about like right there. Click OK. And again, I'm going to do the darkest portion and then the lightest portion is going to be out there. Oh, see, that was too much. So I'm going to go back, and maybe it's here. There we go. Actually, that's not too bad. I'm going to try and do it just a little bit more. And it's still kind of radial-like. I'm going to leave it right there. And I'm going to Control D. And you can see that I've got some shadows in the corners of the room. And I can repeat this process for um, the other two walls. And then, of course, here on this wall, um, there's going to be a shadow kind of coming off of this little box back here. So we're going to do a new layer. We're going to name it um, Papered Wall Shadow. I always try to be as uh, obvious as I can when I name some of this stuff. And so again, I'm going to take my polygonal lasso tool. The light is probably coming in similar to this follow that line down here with the wall and kind of come straight up. That's where that shadow is going to be. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to try the linear again. And I feel like it could be coming in more from this direction. Hey, that's not too bad. I'm going to do it one more time. Kind of giving it layers as I go. And control D. And you can see the shadow, however, is going over my couch. And so that's where I need to put this particular one underneath that couch pattern so that it kind of comes through and it looks very natural. The other thing I want to show you is like how to get light to show uh, in your uh, 
lamp fixtures and such. So if I want to kind of show a light coming down uh, and working here, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it pendant light because that's basically what that fixture is, is a pendant. And it's the it's basically the same concept except we're going to switch colors a little bit. So um, light is going to come out of this lamp and maybe it's going to be a little bit more of a spotlight kind of thing. So I'm again over exaggerating where that light's going to be. And there's that tool. Uh, I'm going to do shadow but this time instead of doing a dark color I'm actually going to do a lighter color. So I'm going to sample what color this light bulb is and I'm going to come well, let's let's try a, just a yellow just to kind of see what happens. That's what everybody always thinks light looks like. So let's click OK. And again, I'm, I like the idea of doing the radial because that's kind of what the light bulb does. It does a radial kind of pattern. So I'm going to start close to the lamp and then I'm going to kind of get out further kind of like this right here. Oh yeah, that looks good. I mean, I can layer it if I want to, but I think that looks pretty good um, all by itself. Control D and you can see that it does this. Now, this is a little harsh. Um, the yellow is kind of crazy. So if I come down here to the layers area and where it says normal, I look at soft light. It's actually going to soften it quite a bit. And so you can use some darker colors to kind of get the idea that there's light. Um, let's see what hard light looks like. Hey, that's not too bad either. So play with these because they really do some neat effects with things. Um, vivid light, so if you want a more of a white kind of there, looks like, let's see what's linear light. I don't see a whole lot of difference there. Pin light, oh that's kind of like a pinkish color, so I actually kind of like the hard light. I think that works well. And it helps me show that it's kind of tapering off, it goes out into the space. I still get the illusion of light happening and that's exactly what I wanted. So again, play with this a little bit. Um, in all aspects, it's really a matter of knowing where the shadow is compared to the finish that you have over in the layers panel. It's getting the right um, linear or radial effect that you want for what the shadow that you're working with. Coming back to here, look at how things are going to be um, spoking out. How is the light affected? Should it really be this dark this far away? Probably not, but look at the pots have shadows, the lamp has shadows, the TV stand, I mean you kind of have to work your way from the window outwards and see kind of what happens that way. But that's how you add light and shadows to your rendering. So go forth my young Padawans and have fun.